Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today I'm taking a look at a green-white plus one plus one counter deck, which has received a ton of great cards over the years. At one mana there's Hardened Scales and Enchantments saying if one or more plus one counters would be put on a creature we control, we get an additional one of those counters instead. At two mana we've got a similar effect with Conclave Mentor, stapled onto a 2-2 creature that when it dies gains life equal to its power. We've got Luminarch Aspirant, a great powerhouse in standard, about to rotate out, but will be awesome in this deck, giving us an extra plus one counter each turn. There's Spelt Collector at one mana, which can grow over time as we play larger creatures and they die, and the curve of a turn one Pelt Collector into a turn two Conclave Mentor will result in a 3-3 Pelt Collector attacking on turn two, which is an awesome start. We also have a few copies of Swarm Shambler, which can protect our creatures, in that if the opponent tries to take them out with spot removal, they'll be replaced with 1-1 Insect tokens, and can also activate it in the late game to put additional counters onto it. Stone Coil is great to play at any point in our curve, as a Reach Trampler with protection from Multicolored. Then at 2 mana we also want at least a few copies of Scavenging Ooze to help us deal with the Grease Fang Parhelion decks in the format, also just awesome synergy throughout the deck. We've got a removal spell at 2 mana with Dromoka's Command, which often lets us put a plus 1 counter on a creature and then fight an opposing creature, and the creature we target doesn't have to be the same one, can also potentially save us from damage-based sweepers or other removal spells, and can also make the opponent sacrifice an enchantment, which can also come up when playing against a Mono Blue Spirits deck with Curious Obsession. And then a great addition from the recent Explorer Anthology is Hangerback Walker, especially in the more controlling matchups where the opponent has access to a lot of removal, as the Hangerback will come into play with X plus 1 counters on it, and when it dies we get a number of 1-1 one -one flying Thopter tokens equal to the number of counters on Hangerback, so it can be great insurance against sweeper effects for instance, and we can also passively grow the Hangerback over time by paying 1 mana and tapping it. At 3 mana there's a Rishkar, which turns all our plus 1 counter creatures into mana creatures, and then also puts 2 plus 1 counters on our creatures when it enters. And then topping off our curve we've got some awesome planeswalkers with a Vivian Arcbow Ranger, which can give 2 plus 1 counters on our team and give those creatures trample until end of turn as well, and can also minus 3 to use it as removal. And the minus 5, which we can activate on the second turn it's in play basically, gives us access to our sideboard creatures, which is why we have all these 7 different creatures with use useful abilities, and then a one of a Wandering Emperor, which also has plus one counter synergy, can also use it as removal with the minus two to exile a tapped creature. And then our mana base has a few goodies with the channel lands, Aiganjo and Boseju, as well as two copies of Lair of the Hydra as a creature land to apply pressure against control decks, and then a ton of fixing since we need triple green for Vivian, while still potentially wanting double white for Wandering Emperor on turn four, so we need access to Temple Garden, branch off pathway, and then I've got a split between the farmland and some petal grove, but any four of these will do. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and seems promising. Hardened scales into maybe a hangar back. Just need to pick up some more green sources to eventually play Vivian, but Rishkar can also help with that. Turn one elves. Okay, let's go with Hangar back. Next turn, Rishkar. We'll make Hangar back into a 4 4 already. Let's see if our opponent's on maybe a green Stompy deck or something else. Playing Boseju turn 1 means they might not have many other lands in hand. Alright, opponent's Junt instead. It looks like maybe a Sacrifice deck, which could top off its curve with a Bolas of Citadel. At least Hangerback's pretty decent against a Priest here. So let's go ahead and play a Rishkar. A counter each. And hit for four. And then next turn we can put Vivian to use. Either fighting a Priest or potentially uh, growing our creatures even more. So they could already play Bolas of Citadel here with the mana from Priest and the mana creatures if they attempt them first. It's gonna be a Courier's Briefcase instead. 
If they play a Mayhem Devil, I'm happy to kill it with Vivian. Gonna be a Ghost Rider instead. So we'll sack Hangar back to the Priests, which will give us four 1 1 Thopters. And another Priest, fair enough. Might be better off just playing a Vivian, pumping some of my Thopters, as opposed to uh, trying to take out a Priest, now that they have a second one. I have survived Nico Bolas, and I will survive you. And then... Could attack with everyone. <laughs> Stomping time. Could also play a Pelt Collector as more sacrifice fodder. Which is kind of interesting here. Tapping one of our 3-3 three, three Thopters. Yeah, I don't hate it. And then attack with 3-3 three, three, Rishkar. And then maybe one Thopter. So we have more protection for Vivian. Sure. Opponent takes it all, down to eight. Getting their life total low means a potential Bolas of Citadel will be less impactful. If Mayhem Devil shows up, we could still be in trouble, as they can kill the one toughness Thopters before making us sack the rest. Opponent activates Priest, probably start by just sacking a 1-1 Thopter, could also sack a 3-3-1 to grow Pelt Collector up to a 3-3, don't think that's necessary. Is it time for Citadel? Nope, just a cycled Proving Ground. And a Collected Company. Does it find Devil? Nope, just Lenor Elves and Innkeeper. So that seems manageable. That early hangar bag definitely saving us against double priest. Otherwise we would have been in trouble. And our opponent's kind of staring down lethal from Vivian pumping our flyers. And then we even have an ooze to potentially exile Woestrider if that ends up in the graveyard so it cannot escape. So yeah, not sure how they can get out of this. Maybe if they've got a fatal push for one of the Thopters. Opponent passes, and can play Ooze to grow Pelt Collector as well. And then plus Vivian, which also gives Trample. So let's say we pump Rishkar and a Thopter. If they kill Rishkar on the ground, then... It would also grow Pelt Collector, which would in turn also get Trample. Since they can enable Revolt on a potential Fatal push here. We're fit and then we'll move to Combots. And probably fine to turn everyone sideways. Still have 9 in the air. Alright, let the damage happen. Opponent's gonna activate priests. I guess we can eat two creatures with scavenging ooze and then sacrifice it so it also grows pelt collector so it gains trample. I guess that's already good enough, but might as well gain a bit more life. Strider sacrifices priests, but there's still that trigger on the stack, so I can sack the ooze, grow pelt collector, and get even more damage in. On the off chance that they have some removal here, but it doesn't look like it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a nice curve. Pelt Collector into Mentor. 
is the plan, facing spirits. Alright, so hopefully we can resolve Mentor. Could have actually considered playing Shambler if we suspect a counterspell. It's gonna be a Cure Obsession instead. Now Dromoka's command can take care of Cure Obsession, making them sacrifice it. So I think that's gonna be our play here. I can attack with Pelt Collector, hoping they'd block... Wow, this is gonna be a complete blowout, so we can put a plus one counter on our Pelt Collector and make them sacrifice an enchantment. Not bad. And then probably go for Mentor, likely gets countered, play Shambler. Or we can go for like a 3-3 Stone Coil, although it's probably better to double spell in this spot if possible, even though 3-3 Stone Coil grows Spell Collector. Hanger back is a card I care about least if it gets countered, I think. So I could try that, plus Swarm Shambler. And then next turn maybe go Mentor plus 2-2 two, two Stone Coil, which would then be a 3-3 three, three to grow Pelt Collector. Alright, there's the Snare. Hit for 2. And then next turn, Mentor into Stone Coil's the plan. Aspirin's not bad either, so if they counter Mentor we still have a decent backup. Alright, that gets denied, but this should resolve. Grow Shambler, hit for four. And we've got a nice leftover in hand. And our opponent explodes, awesome. Yeah, that was a dirty Dromoka's command. Okay, we're on the play, and is quite promising, although we might need another creature if something bad happens to Aspirant. But it's gonna be a 3-3 right away. Opponent on a white deck. Hangerback's also quite nice. Um, between Aspirant and Hangerback. I think we still play Aspirant first, and then next turn we can harden scales into Hangerback, put a ton of counters on it. Unless we want to play around an exile effect, in which case we might be better off still pumping Aspirant a little bit. Put on green white. Innkeeper points towards a life gain deck. Okay. So let's get this party started. They might have a Skyclave to potentially exile Hangar back, so for now I think I'm okay pumping Aspirant itself. Get in more damage, go and take six. They might have a Collected Company here to get back on the board. Otherwise, they're gonna struggle to deal with this. All right, Inspiring Overseer, so they're just an Angel deck. But we had a very promising start and still have a removal spell left over here to deal with this carrier Angels. Okay, so don't think we need to grow Hanger back, we can just bump it with Aspirants. Could also animate Lair of the Hydra, which may not be a bad idea, just make it a 2-2. And then uh, we can put the counters on it from Aspirants. And I'm fine if Hanger Bank trades for both of their creatures. Opponent chumps, takes eight. And this Dromoka's command should be the final nail in the coffin. Jada, Font of Hope. Unlikely to get the job done, especially with another Dromoka's command. So plus one counter fights. And do it once again.
Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand is missing a 2-drop, but still seems keepable. Best case scenario, find a Conclave Mentor on 2. Opponent's Black Green, looks like a, an Absalon Grease Fang deck perhaps. And there's already Chariot in the Graveyard. Can play Serpent for 2. Growing Pelt Collector, so we can attack past Stitcher Supplier. Opponent might already chum block to try and mill Parhelion, which is fine by me. Do have a Wandering Emperor to potentially help interact. Ooh, Grease Fang. So, if they have a Can't Stay Away, they could also bring it back. For now, just go for Rishkar. And then, where to put the counters? Can put one on Rishkar himself. And then, one on Stonecoil, perhaps. So we can more easily grow Pelt Collector later. And attack. And then next turn we can maybe put our Wandering Emperor to use. Salvage. Finding double Grease Fang so they can put one in hand and presumably cast it if they've got the white mana. And that's gonna put a Chariot in play. Alright, actually didn't have the white mana so they're gonna have to Wither Bloom command first to pick one up. And another Stitcher Supplier, maybe finding Parhelion as well. Nope, still just Chariots as the best vehicle. Okay, so what does Wandering Emperor do for me? Exiling a tapped uh, Grease Fang, I guess, isn't bad. Although, they're still gonna get a chance to crew the Chariot. So then I might be better off playing a Serpent and Aspirant here, and then next turn we can exile Grease Fang. Play this on green in case we find Vivian. And then... How do we want to sequence the rest of our turn? I could play Aspirant and then Stone Coil for 3 tapping Rishkar. So we actually grow our uh, Pelt Collector, giving it Trample after putting an extra counter on it with Aspirant. So Stitcher Supplier is going to be less effective at jumping but I still expect them to block in the hopes of finding Parhelion. They don't. Alright. So we're gonna see Grease Fang bring back Chariots. Unless they've got another Stitcher Supplier and they want to try and mill Parhelion. And yeah, opponent going for an Undead Butler here. So I guess Chariot's not good enough for them. Or they have a Can't Stay Away to bring back Grease Fang instead. Makes sense. Luckily for us, no Parhelion, just Isika's Chariot, which will leave behind some cat tokens. And they've got another Grease Fang in hand now as well, so exiling the one in play is not necessarily gonna help too much. So we'll take four. Chariot back to hand. We can play Wandering Emperor. Which I might want to actually like flash in at instant speed to make the opponent's blocks worse as opposed to exiling Grease Fang. And then send in maybe only the Tramplers keep Rishkar back to block the cats. Since we're already down to 14 here. Alright, so we are not going to have lethal. How do we want to use our Wandering Emperor? I don't have to kill Stitcher Supplier if I don't want to risk milling Parhelion. Just deal 3 to the cat token. And then we can keep the uh, Pelt Collector by putting a counter on it. And 
and then three to the cats, zero to the stitcher supplier seems safer. They can bring a creature back, that's okay. Opponent goes for a supplier, and sure I'll play out my lands, although I don't think it matters. All right, moment of truth. Can they mill Parhelion with mill three here? If they can, that's game over. So yeah, took them a while to find it, halfway through the deck, but there's the first Parhelion. So not killing the Stitcher Supplier was probably the right call, but uh, still wasn't enough here. Going on cruise Parhelion. And since it has Vigilance, there's no way we could have exiled it with the Wandering Emperor. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a lovely start of Pelt Collector into Conclave Mentor. And then double Dromoka's Command, in case we're up against a creature deck. Turn one Lanor Elves. I could try and take it out with Dromoka's Command. I think I'm still better off playing Mentor and then next turn Command will put two counters on our creature, which is probably still enough to fight whatever three drop they would ramp out here. Old Growth Troll included. Ooh, and a Vivian. That's gonna be awesome next turn. Could also just attack with Pelt Collector. And then let's see, if we fight Elves and they block with Troll, we would lose Pelt Collector, which is probably not good. So I think I should just fight the Troll. Although that is going to give them a small mana boost here, which is not ideal. So maybe I do attack with Pelt Collector. And then I can fight the Elves and put counters on Pelt Collector, fighting with Mentor if necessary. And if they take it, what's next? I guess just counters on Mentor and fight Elves and leave the troll. Alright, so... Plus one counters and fights. Counters on Pelt Collector, fight Mentor with Elves. So at least the Elves are taken care of. So not a bad turn. Opponent does have the forest to enchant critically. If they had double lair, for instance, they would not be able to enchant anything. All right, and then next turn we get to play Vivian, which should be quite effective with a mentor in play. Another non-forest with Buseju and a Lovestruck Beast to play defense. Okay, so. Could Vivian and then just essentially kill the Lovestruck Beast with a minus three. Maybe leaving back Conclave Mentor. And then the way they kill Vivian is if they have a Primal Might to kill Mentor and then finish off Vivian. So that could still be rough. So might be better off just plussing with Vivian up to five loyalty. And then do I just keep both creatures back to play it safe? Listen to the sounds of the Don't hate that idea. And then next turn we can put our Dromoka's command to good use. Sure. Primal Might could still be kind of rough. If they kill Pelt Collector and then force us to trade Mentor. It's going to be a Nissa. That's unexpected. Okay. So we'll try and clear a path for our creatures to attack Nissa. Which shouldn't be too difficult. So let's see, Buseju, only non-basic lands, so can't destroy the forest with it. So I'll just plus attack Nissa with both. Although then Vivian's vulnerable on the way back. What if I just attack with Belt Collector? Would be a 9-9 Trample. Yeah, I guess uh, that would be good enough. And our opponent sees a riding on the wall and concedes. Yeah, we were pretty... Far ahead here, I would say, and uh, especially with Dromoka's command at instant speed, we would make it very difficult for them to recover. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play. Our hands got plenty of aspirants, so sure, we'll try it. And then we've got our ooze in case we're up against a Grease Fang deck. Going on to red black. If it's red black mid range, that's kind of a tough matchup if we don't get one of our planeswalkers going. Since they tend to have a lot of removal, including stomps for aspirants. Okay. There's a Wandering Emperor, which is nice. So they could have a Fatal Push or a Stomp. I guess we'll try and spread out our counters as much as possible. Alright, no early removal. It's kind of surprising. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That's fine. So our opponent's on the back foot. And not hating pumping the same aspirant to maybe bait them into blocking and being able to use Wandering Emperor, but we could also just play another aspirant, which is probably good enough. And our opponent concedes, yeah, the triple aspirant opener against a removal light draw from Red Black Midrange gets the job done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising start. Harden scales into turn to aspirant. Let's see what we're up against. The blue deck spirits. Okay. So we'll go with aspirant here. And then having instant speed interaction with Dromoka's commands also quite nice. Probably see a spectral sailor. Yep. Shacklegeist can try and keep our creatures in check. But I'm liking Pelt Collector into Swarm Shambler just to get our board presence going. And then it's going to be easier to resolve our instance as opposed to a sorcery speed uh, creature. So let's Shambler, which grows Pelt Collector up to a 3 3 as well. And the yeah, opponent knows that they cannot really handle such a board presence starting out. And scoops it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand has potential. Um, probably needs a couple more lands, but uh, can play a tapped grove on one to make sure we resolve our aspirant on two. And then a couple more lands we can maybe play Vivian. Turn one Lenor Elves. Is a scary start, but uh, yeah, we'll go with Aspirants, and then next turn we can maybe fight with Dromoka's command. It's gonna be Pelt Collectors, or point on a Stompy deck and a Pack Leader. Okay, so with Dromoka's commands, I can fight the Pack Leader, although that would grow Pelt Collector as well. I can play Shambler. Could also just hang back. Um, grow Aspirants. Could find Lenor Elves. Definitely have some options. But let's say I attack with Aspirant as a 3 3, opponent blocks with Pack Leader. Then I can put plus one counter on Aspirants. And then maybe fight Swarm Shambler with Lenor Elves. Yeah, don't hate that idea. And if they double block, we'll have to make a slightly different play. Opponent takes it. So they can likely grow Pelt Collector, so I think I should take out Pack Leader so they don't get to snowball card advantage. So plus one counter and fights. Health Collector grows, and it's probably going to grow once again here. At least Hangar Bank should be decent in the matchup, as a blocker that can leave behind some extra flyers. 4-4 four, four Pelt Collector attacks. And pick up our own Collector. So we can play that, plus Ooze. And then where to put the Aspirant counter? Do we play around the Primal Mites? 
Or do we make a 5-5 Aspirant on defense? Could also just go Pelt Collector plus Hanger back, and then start putting counters on Hanger back, but then we don't have any profitable blocks. Although we're kind of putting all our eggs in one basket here if we pump Aspirant. So close call. Think playing Ooze is fine. And then I think I should pump the Aspirant, in which case I can also attack. Turn it into a race. That way it feels less bad if they do have a fight spell to kill Aspirant. And then Untap Land of the top is great. And uh, if not, we can still play Hangar back, maybe grow Swarm Shambler. Okay, that's a lot of damage coming in. And another Pelt Collector. Hmm, awkward sequencing, they could have picked up an extra counter. There's only one creature in a graveyard to grow ooze. So we probably have to hit the brakes. And then maybe play a 2-2 Stone Coil. Put count from Aspirant, keep Aspirant back. Hope there's no fight spell left over. And then I can either activate Shambler or grow the ooze. Could also play 3-3 three, three Stone Coil to grow Pelt Collector. Is that better? It's a close call. I think I'll go with a 2-2 two, two Stone Coil. And pass. So we're pretty much dead to a fight effect here. It's gonna be their own ooze. Don't think we fight over graveyards just yet. Can just activate Shambler. Right, they're gonna try and eat the wolf, that's fine. Could see an all-out attack. Yep. So we can eat the Steel Leaf. And then... What else? Just double block Old Growth Troll, maybe. Take five, down to two. Could also triple block Belt Collector. And then grow Shambler. Keep the Ooze in play. And then the opponent's Ooze is gonna grow a bit, but so be it. So now we could play Vivian and then use Aspirant to kill Ooze before it gets out of hand. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. So at most again grow the Ooze three times, so still enough to kill. Although we could get the extra counter from Aspirant first if we needed one. And then where to put the Aspirant counter is the next question. Maybe on Stonecoil Serpents. And then we gotta stay back. Alright, close game. Primal Might of the top still probably kills us. As they can kill Aspirant and then trample over for a bunch. Pack Leader is acceptable. No attacks and a Rishkar, great draw too. Although I'm sort of liking play a big hangar back. Or we can maybe gain some more life with Ooze, there's two creatures there. So if we go Rishkar, then we still keep up mana to activate Ooze even in the opponent's turn. So let's do that. Spread out our counters. 
And then Vivian, maybe pump Stone Coil and Rishkar, since we can pump the Ooze twice more up to a 5-5. This will be fun to watch. And counter on. Don't think it matters too much, but Rishkar sure. It's gonna take a second for us to start turning our creature sideways, but. I'll feel a lot safer once we gain a bit more life and then play a hanger back. And then Vivian should help us take over. Alright, opponent's sending. Draws with the pack leader. So they can activate this up to 5 power. So let's say we block there with Aspirants. Ooze can profitably block Old Growth Troll once we pump twice, and then Rishkar trades for Pelt Collector, and our opponent packs it in. Awesome, close game here against Mono Green, but Vivian stuck the landing, dealing with the Ooze before it got out of hand and was able to carry us to victory. So yeah, this green-white plus one counter deck, very similar, I would say, in how it plays out as the mono-green stompy deck. You're trying to present some big creatures very early and then back them up with a few fight spells. We have access to planeswalkers to push us over the top, as well as some plus one counter synergies, which will eventually outgrow some of the green creatures. The green deck has the advantage of one mana elves to give them those explosive starts, as well as the great henge for card advantage and collected company, whereas we don't quite have those tools, although we could technically play great henge as well here, but it's not going to be quite as good as in mono green where they have all those five powered three drops to play it on turn four already, but uh, certainly a card to potentially consider. But for the most part we're trying to get on board quickly and then back up our creatures with a bit of interaction. We've got both Dromoka's Command and Scavenging Ooze to help in the Grease Fang matchups, which are quite popular at the moment and can be a tough deck to beat if you don't have that interaction to take out Grease Fang at instant speed or interact with the graveyard. And then we're mostly hoping to dodge blue-white control because outside of our hangar backwalker and our planeswalkers we don't have a ton of staying power against Supreme Verdict. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.